Welcome. We're going to talk today about real cells. We're going to try and differentiate between an ideal cell, which I talked about last time, and a real cell. And we will see the main difference is there's something called as an internal resistance, and because of which we're going to have a new term called as a terminal voltage. To make sense of all of this, let's begin with an example. Let's assume that we have some sort of a, uh, we have a slide which is not constructed properly. So there is no ladder and, it, and the slide is not sloping down and there are kids sitting all over that slide and they're all disappointed because you know, they're not able to slide over here. And let's give this, ma let's give this kid some mass. For simplicity, let's say the mass of these kids are just one kilogram. So maybe newborn babies or something. And also for simplicity, I'm going to assume the gravitational acceleration in this example to be just one. I mean, I know in on Earth is it's 10, but I want to make this as simple as possible. So I'm just going to say G is equal to one. We're living on some hypothetical planet, maybe one meter per second square, whatever. Okay. Anyways, so we have these kids and they're all disappointed. They're not able to slide down and that's where you come along so you're standing over here and thinking thinking to yourself well how are you going to help these kids well you get an idea you say okay i'm going to use all my might and i'm going to take this end maybe you can take this end i'm going to raise it up and i'm going to maintain a high difference between this end and this end and after maintaining the height difference, the kids are going to fall down. The kids are going to slide down. They're going to be happy. But, but remember, there is no ladder for the kids to climb up, which means you really have to pick each kid up. And because of this now, we'll think about how much work you can do per kid. So let's begin by assuming that you are 100% efficient dude. That means you waste absolutely no energy. Okay. But still, you have some maximum energy. You have some maximum. You also you are also limited uh, by the amount of work that you can do per kid. So let's say your limitation is the maximum amount of work you can do is let's say ten joules per kid. That's all you can do. Uh, but kid, not kid. That's all you can do. That means if you were to move a kid up, then the maximum work you could do is just ten joules. So how high? Can you raise this end of of the slide and also maintain a continuous current of the kids that's the question so to calculate that well that's going to be quite easy we're going to use w is equal to mgh w is the work that you can do so that's 10 joules m is the mass of the kid and g we are assuming it to be one and that tells us that the height that you can maintain is 10 meters and therefore, that's what you're going to do. So here's what you're going to do now. You're going to, you're going to stand over here. And you're going to have one hand raised up over there. And because of which, you're now maintaining. So let's say you're maintaining a height difference between the two ends of the slide. And because of which, because of your social service, kids now can fall down we they're very happy but remember this kid once it falls down once this guy falls down he's gonna come all the way back over here and he's going to request you to move him back up and you have to do that so you're gonna take this kid and you're gonna move him all the way back up and remember since you can do 10 joules of work per kid you can move all the kid all the way back up to 10 meters that's that's exactly what we calculated right this is 10 so where did it, where did it go so it's over here yeah there it is see 10 meters and therefore you're going to maintain a height difference between the ends of the slide to be 10 meters and we also can think about the energy of the kid Remember, at this point, we're going to say the kid has, is at its lowest energy level. Let's call it a zero joules. And when the kid comes all the way up over here, since you did 10 joules of work per kid, you're going to increase its potential energy. You're going to increase its potential energy to 10 joules. And then once that kid has 10 joules, he can use that 10 joules to convert himself into kinetic energy and eventually it's going to go somewhere. I don't know where it's going to go. And eventually you lose all that energy and then you're going to end up doing work again. 
And if there are many kids, you can keep on doing this over and over and over again. And eventually, you're going to have a current. You're going to have a con constant current. So this is going to maintain a constant current. So this is like an ideal cell. So let's translate that into a cell now. Okay. So in an ideal cell, we can imagine here is a resistor. You can think of this as a slide. Okay. Here's a resistor. And you can imagine right now, there are charges everywhere. Okay, there are positive charges everywhere. I'm not gonna draw them, they're there. Okay, so let's not draw them, but they're there. But these charges, they're just sitting over there, pretty much like how kids were sitting over here, doing nothing because there's no one to push them. Same is the case over here. There's no one to push these little guys, these poor guys. And that's where you come along. I mean, a battery comes along. So imagine we put a battery over here and let's say the EMF of this battery, we're going to put the EMF of the battery to be 10 volts. And we discussed last time what the EMF meant. What this means is that the battery can maintain a potential difference and in moving a coulomb across that potential difference, the battery is going to do 10 joules of work per coulomb which means if this is the positive terminal of the battery and if this is the negative terminal of the battery, then when the battery moves a coulomb of charge from here to here, it's moving a coulomb, the battery ends up doing work. And the work that the battery ends up doing at work is just 10 joules. Notice that coulomb over here, this, this coulomb over here is pretty much like this kid over here. When that coulomb is over here at this point, it's like at its lowest energy and so that potential energy is zero, we can say. But when a 10 joules of work is done on that coulomb, the coulomb gets 10 joules of energy. And with that 10 joules of energy, that coulomb can fall down all the way. And because of which we can now say that the potential difference across the ends of the battery potential difference across this end, let's call this point A and let's call this as point B, which is the same as this point A and this point B because there's absolutely no resistance in between. So we can say that the potential difference over here is 10 volt. So notice that in this example, the EMF E is exactly equal to the potential difference across the ends of the cell. This potential difference across the ends is what we call as the terminal voltage. Okay, but this is true only in an ideal cell, in a cell which is 100% efficient, which means all the work the battery can do is used up to raise the potential energy of that charge. So let's redraw this idealized cell situation. So here is what an ideal battery looks like. So let's use the same color. So here is my external circuit of having some resistance over here let's call that some resistance r and here is our cell so we're going to put our cell over here as our cell with the positive terminal and a negative terminal i'm going to connect this the emf of the cell is 10 volt and because of which the terminal potential difference or the terminal voltage of the cell is also 10 volts all this works for an ideal cell. But now comes the question, what happens when you consider a practical cell? So let's go back to your example. You see here, we considered you to be 100% efficient. To understand what a practical cell is, we need to understand what happens in reality. So let's go back to this example. Here you are, standing, and now let's consider you to be not 100% efficient, but let's consider you to be only 80% efficient. And you can still do 10 joules of work per kid. So the amount of work that you can do in raising a kid, so this is the work you do in raising a kid, is still 10 joules, but your conversion factor is just 80%. What that means is when you're raising a kid up, not all the 10 joules is used up to raise the kid. Some amount of work is also done against, against, <clears throat> let's say your internal muscles 
I mean, you guys actually feel this when you're when you're lifting a weight. You actually feel pain in your muscles, and and the reason why that's happening is because you're doing work against our inner muscles. There's some sort of resistance that's happening from inside, so you have to overcome that resistance as well. So because of this, let's assume that only eight joules is done on kid. Okay, and so remaining two joules is to overcome internal resistance. So internal opposition, something like that. Okay. Now what's going to happen? Well, now you're going to come back over here. You're going to raise the slide. But here's my question. Can you raise this slide all the way up to 10 meters? The answer is no. You can't raise the slide to 10 meters because the work that you're doing on kid, so this is the work done on the kid, okay, is just 8 joules. So if, if 8 is equal to mgh, it's 1 into 1 into h, and so h can only be 8 meters. So this time, all you can do is maintain a height of just 8 meters. That's all you can do. Okay, and so here are the kids. So let's draw our kids in red this time. So here are the kids. And the kids are all falling down. Whee! They're coming back up. And they're requesting you to be pushed up. And when you push them up, I'm not drawing you over here. <laughs> For some reason, it became crowded. I forgot to draw you. But when this kid is being pushed up, notice that you do 10 joules of work, but the 2 joules is wasted in overcoming some internal resistance. I mean, and you feel that, right? Because of because you're made up of flesh and bones. You're not a robot. Even robot have friction inside. So whatever, okay? So you only do eight joules of work. And because of this now, if the internal energy, I mean, <laughs> not the internal energy, if the potential energy here was zero, the potential energy over here becomes only eight joules. And therefore, only eight joules is available to fall down. But remember that this guy is still doing 10 joules of work. And so that's the whole idea behind internal resistance of a cell. So let's come back to our cell now. Imagine we have our cell, which has an EMF, EMF of 10 volt, which means it can do 10 joules of work per coulomb. And here's the positive terminal and here's the negative terminal. The problem is that when it's going to transfer that one coulomb of charge, from its negative terminal to the positive, positive terminal, you can again imagine here the potential difference was, uh, sorry, the potential energy was zero, but here the potential energy is not 10 joules. Because although it's doing 10 joules per coulomb, it's the entire 10 joules is not being used up to raise the potential energy of the coulomb. Maybe two joules is being lost to some internal energy, some, 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 some internal resistance, some internal opposition. And just like before, it can only raise its potential energy, say, only to 10, 8 joules, not 10 joules. So because of this now, when we connect this circuit, notice that the energy over here is just 8 joules. And because of this, when these kids, are, not the kids, this, this charges, when this one coulomb falls from here to here, the energy difference is only 8 joules. So 8 joules per coulomb, that means 8 volts. So the energy difference or the potential difference per coulomb now is just 8 volts. And that's what you need to understand. So if we draw this again, I'm going to draw this now with just one color. I'm tired of drawing changing colors. So if we draw this over here, although the EMF of the cell is 10 volt, the resistor and the terminal potential difference, the voltage across the ends of the battery is not going to be 10 volts. It's only, in this example, going to be 8 volts. So it's only able to deliver 8 volts over here. And there's something more that we can, we can actually extend this analogy. Let's go back over here. Okay, here we can extend the analogy uh, in the following manner. Imagine that this fellow did not really have to do any work. He didn't have to do any work. Imagine the kids were not falling or maybe the circuit was broken or something like that. Imagine the kids were all stuck and they couldn't move. And so he really did not have to do any work. 
If he doesn't have to do any work, then he doesn't have to worry about overcoming that. He doesn't have to worry about this part, right? Because the kids are not moving. Therefore, we can now say the following. Okay? We can now say the following. If the kids are not moving, if kids are not moving, that means no current, then there is absolutely no opposition from inside. In this case, this fellow can actually maintain a potential difference. This guy can actually maintain a potential difference of 10 meters because he doesn't have to do any work. So he doesn't have to worry about that. That's amazing, isn't it? It's only when the current is maintained. It's only, only when the kids are moving up, his potential difference drops because he has to do work against the external uh, against his internal resistance and we can do the same thing over here you can see the same thing over here if you take out this cell and you make sure its ends are not connected so its ends are not connected over here uh, it's in an open circuit then we will see when the emf is 10 volt the terminal potential difference now will be 10 volt because there is no coulomb flowing from here to here and therefore the battery doesn't have to do any work against its internal resistance and therefore we can now say well the terminal voltage is 10 volt so this tells us something very important when a battery is connected in circuit when a cell is connected in circuit cell is connected or I think a better way to say is when you draw a current from the cell, that's important. When you draw current from cell, current from the cell, its potential, its terminal voltage drops. Its terminal voltage drops. This is very, very important to understand. So just to be clear, I know I'm, I'm taking more of your time, but just to be clear, let's go back and understand over here. As long as there are no kids flowing, this fellow is not, it's, it doesn't have to do any work and he's going to say, okay, I'm going to maintain 10 meters. But the moment kids start flowing, he says, oh, I have to do a lot of work now. And because of which he will not be able to maintain 10 meters. He's only able to going to maintain now 8 meters. So that's when there is a current flowing, okay? So when the current is flowing in the circuit, he's only able to maintain eight meters. And something more you can understand is, what if, what if the resistance of this slide, if the slide was very smooth and because of which the current was very high, imagine the kids were coming very fast, then he will have to move the kids up very fast. And if he moves the kids up very fast, he ends up doing more work against internal, against his internal resistance. It's like moving up weights very quickly. And if you keep on moving very quickly, notice this fellow will not be able to even maintain 8 meters. The potential difference is going to further drop down. Oh, this tells us something very important. As the current increases, this tells us something even more important. As the current increases, as the current through the cell, as you draw more, oh, that's, that's better too. As you draw more current from cell, you draw more current from the cell, its terminal voltage, the voltage across its end, terminal voltage keeps decreasing, keeps decreasing. The goal of this episode was, I, I know I must have taken a long time for you, I mean, yeah, I'm taking about 20 minutes I think. But the goal of this episode was really to explain to you what this statement and what the second statement meant. Because most of the time it's very hard, it feels very abstract, but I hope I was able to give you some intuition behind what happens in a practical cell, what this internal resistance is, and why the terminal voltage in general doesn't have to be the same as the EMF. It only is as long as you're not drawing any current. So hope, okay, so without any further time, we're gonna, we're gonna stop it over here, and I'm gonna see you next time. Stay tuned.